Tonight is about Ian. For those of us who didn't know him, we're here to listen to you and his family. But because of the way in which Ian died, there are many things that need to be said tonight, not least from the public to the family. Any family that experiences what you have, to lose someone in the manner that you have and so publicly, it takes so much courage and love and unity to come here tonight. And we respect you for that. It says a lot about you and a lot about Ian. The policing at the G20 shocked people across the world with its brutality. And there was the death of the man on the way home. Initial statements focused on building up a picture that Ian's death was somehow inevitable due to his health. Yet you only had to see footage of the G20 to say if one thing is inevitable at this is that people are going to be hurt and it's going to be by the police. We all saw how Ian's death was portrayed originally, blaming protesters, praising the police. But the public didn't accept that and they came forward with their evidence and the family didn't accept that and they came forward and spoke out. As a family, you face challenges like the Riggs family, the Menezes family, Mikey Powell's family, so many other families. Grieving families forced to extract answers from institutions that seem to obstruct the truth. And we are here tonight because we recognise how difficult it is to put faith in those public institutions when they are investigating one of their own. We see your difficulties, but we do not think you're powerless. We see an independent police complaints process that has lost public faith, stepping in late, issuing statements before investigation, and with a history that has led people to say they simply don't work. All eyes are on them to deliver to you. We've all seen before the smears when somebody dies in state custody. That through a web of misinformation, lies, leaks and innuendo, there's an attempt to divert attention to, from the truth and make that person responsible for their own death. We will not be deceived by this. We know you are seeking answers against a backdrop, a history of police impunity. No serious comeback for the police if they break the law. But this is only possible whilst public institutions fail to hold them to account. Real support comes from the public being behind you keeping an open mind and continuing to press for the truth and justice beside you. Not accepting reports that claim lessons have been learned, not accepting that things will change if we just let them get on with you. Real support comes from the public being behind the family and that support is here tonight. Thank you. So I'm here today and you Ian as a friend or a family member. I did not. I'm the family solicitor. And like most of you, I was introduced to Ian through a series of tragic photos and videos that were released shortly after his death. I'm pleased to say that the stories and memories of uh, his family have helped me see Ian, Ian as a real person. And I believe that one of the reasons the family have organised this vigil today is to help other people to get to see more of the real Ian behind the images that we're so familiar with. I was asked to talk about Ian's movements on the day and how and why he died. I'm afraid I can't. If I did, then I could put at risk the judicial process which the family sincerely hope will call to account the officers. I do, however, believe that it's important to consider for a moment the, ba uh, sorry, the battle there's been to get to the truth. And I'd like to take a moment to remind you of what happened immediately after Ian's death. On Wednesday the 1st of April, newspapers reported that the police had been alerted to a man who'd collapsed in the street on Corn Hill and they sent medics to assist him. The police alleged that they were impeded by protesters hurling missiles. Traumatic images of Ian lying on Corn Hill were then circulated in the media. On Thursday the 2nd of April, we knew Ian's name and witnesses came forward to say uh, that it was actually them who called the ambulance. It was them who put Ian into, um, uh, into a recovery position and those witnesses also rubbished accounts of the barrage of missiles. On Friday the 3rd, the Guardian told City of London Police that they had images of Ian sitting in front of a row of riot officers. The IPCC also received similar reports. But the accounts in the media continued to be mainly about Ian's poor health. On Saturday the 4th of April, the City of London Police made a statement to the press. It said, 
A post-mortem examination found that he died of natural causes and suffered a sudden heart attack on his way home from work. Neither the public nor the family were told of the bruises, of the dog bite or of the internal bleeding. On Sunday the 5th of April, the IPCC told The Guardian that there was nothing in the story and that they were upsetting the family. On Wednesday the 7th of April, video footage emerged that changed everything. An investment fund manager from New York released a video which we're all now very familiar with. The reason he said he released it is because he felt that the family weren't getting answers. Wednesday the 8th of April, I, I found myself in a meeting with the family at City of London Police, talking to the investigating police officer. I had, the, I had in my ears what the fund manager said. And at that meeting, I was told that the officer in the video could have been a member of the public who had stolen a police uniform. The family have battled very hard to get answers and they continue to do so. Some of their battles have included persuading the IPCC to take over the investigation from the City of London Police, persuading the coroner to open an inquest, establishing the cause of death as abdominal bleeding rather than a heart attack, perhaps even persuading uh, Nick Hardwick of the IPCC that there is CCTV in this square. Your camera and phone images have been essential to the investigation and to putting together the jigsaw. The family are deeply indebted to all of you for that. The biggest battle for the family, however, has just been trying to keep going. It's now been eight months and it continues to be a struggle every day. The family made formal complaints to the IPCC, not just about the officers in the video, but also about the police briefings to the press and to the investigation. The family have not yet received any final reports from the IPCC. The IPCC have now passed on a dossier of evidence to the CPS. This was at the beginning of August. The CPS have indicated that a charging decision is due to take place about the end of this month. Depending on whether or not the CPS brings charges and what those charges are, will very much influence whether or not an inquest will follow. It's been eight months since we lost our dad. And it feels like... The rollercoaster co roller has only just started. We've been through so much. We still feel like we've got mountains to climb, like Christmas. We always spend time together around the, Christ around the table. I don't know what, how we're going to do it this year without him. The laughs, the jokes. Tonight is important for us. As I say, a chance to tell you about how we remember Ian. Nothing can take his place. He worked around here in Cornhill, around the bank. Hence why his, his nickname is King of the Hill. My mum's going to say a few words in a minute. Sorry, I'm just, it's really hard for us at the minute. Uh, I've got a comment from um, Boris Johnson that I'd like to read out. As Mayor of London, I'm sure I speak for all fellow Londoners when I send my sincere condolences to the friends and family of Ian Tomlinson. Christmas is a time for families, but for members of the Tomlinson family, this will be a very, very difficult Christmas without their loved ones and thoughts are with them. All we want now is justice for our dad, Ian Tomlinson, King of the Yield. Thank you.